So before we get into today's discussion, I just wanted to quickly mention um, just, uh, you know, looking around and seeing how everybody's pulling together. In fact, uh, you know, as a nation, as a, as a world, helping each other out, you know, in my own community, on my own street, it's really uh, heartwarming to see how everybody's pulling together and dealing with this thing. And once it's all over, we're all going to have a new perspective on things. And um, so, you know, we'll get through it. But I just wanted to quickly mention it because it's such a such a big thing uh, happening right now. Oh, and I wanted to mention our featured artist in this video is Jackie. And she has some uh, really beautiful paintings. So stay tuned till the end of this video. And I'm going to show off some of Jackie's work. So I wanted to talk about different surfaces that you can paint on. There's a lot of debate about whether panels are better than canvas or what type of canvas, cotton versus linen, and acrylic versus oil priming. And so just wanted to, you know, talk about that, that subject for a little bit so you have a better understanding of what your options are. Number one, let's just talk about the, um, on the, the surface itself, um, regardless of what it is, should have a tooth to it. So uh, what tooth means is that if you, you know, pull out a microscope and you really look in really close at the surface of whatever you're painting on, um, you know, whatever foundation it is, it shouldn't be a, a smooth, perfectly smooth surface. It should have some irregular texture to it so that when you paint on top of it, that upper layer of paint is able to bond to the uh, to your surface texture. In other words, it's not slick. It's not glossy. It's got, you know, a very irregular surface. And so that when you paint on it, you get real good bondage and you don't get delamination. So that's number one. So um, whether you're using an oil based primer or whether you're using a, an acrylic uh, primer, whatever it is, it shouldn't be a smooth, slick surface um, for that reason. Um, number two, um, uh, as far as the uh, the bigger texture, in other words, uh, the surface of the canvas itself, the, it, the, whether it's got deep canyons in it, like in, in this illustration, or whether it's got rolling hills, like in this illustration, or whether it's just a smooth, slick surface, like um, you know, a smooth panel would be. Um, and so there's a little bit of uh, um, that. The, the differences between those, there's, there's three things. Number one is that if it's a perfectly s slick surface, you know, like glass or just perfectly smooth, um, it's harder to get full coverage. Um, you know, you're, it's much easier to sort of wipe the paint off and it's, it's a little too slick. You need the surface to be a little bit irregular. And the difference between, um, you know, the deep valleys, like in, the, in this particular illustration, and this is more typical of like cotton canvases, linen canvases tend to be uh, to be not like this, they tend to be more like rolling hills. But the problem with the really deep valleys is you create little teeny flicks of glare on every one of those rolling surfaces that that go deep into the valley. And it, you know you don't really need to understand that. But here's a picture that illustrates that. So this is black paint painted on a deep valley surface canvas. Like and this happens to be a cotton canvas. And you can see all those little teeny flicks of glare, and that's because that irregular, that surface, as it dives down into that valley, right on that curve, you're going to get a little teeny flick of reflection from your light, even if it's perfect light, like an overhead light. So that's the reason I don't like a deep valley surface, because you're much more prone to get those little flicks of glare. So then that leaves us with uh, the rolling hills, which is my favorite, and that, this is what a typical linen canvas would, would have on it. Um, when you put a primer on it, like the Geneva canvas stain or whatever stain you're using, you're, you're filling in some of those deep valleys and you're turning a, you know, making it even more like a rolling hills. And the, re the reason that I like the rolling hills uh, surface um, is because you don't get the little flicks of glare, but it's also not like a slick surface where the, uh, you know, your paint slicks right off the surface. In other words, it, those valleys actually pull paint out slowly out of your brush and it's just a lot easier to get full coverage uh, than it is with a slick surface. And I painted, when I was back uh, painting in uh, my portraits, um, I used to, I tried for about, I think it was about three months trying to paint on a really smooth, slick surface. And finally I just realized it was just more difficult. It was more difficult to get full coverage. It was more difficult to um, you know, really push the paint around the way I wanted to. And I went back to the rolling hill surface. So I've tried both. 
Um, and that was just, you know, my, my feeling about it. If you put black paint in that light, you shouldn't have those little flicks of glare. And if you do, then you need to think about changing your surface to a, a different canvas or whatever it is. Now, let me talk about um, panel versus a canvas, because you can get canvas and you can actually prime it so that it's perfectly smooth like a panel. There, there's so many different types of wood that you can paint on. There's wood that's been kiln dried. There's wood of you know, all sorts of types of, uh, of wood and, and everyone's different. And there's now a lot of the panels are composite wood, which is you know, where they're um, you know, taking wood and, and fibers and glue them together into a composite or you know, there's a number of ways they can do it, even plywoods and all kinds of things. And the thing about all of that is it's just a little bit of an unknown. You know, when you're painting on canvas that's, you know, on stretcher strips and floating in the air, that's something conservationists, you know, people that repair paintings that are hundreds of years old, um, th th that is a, something that is, they're, they're very much used to dealing with. Now, of course, they're used to dealing with panels as well, but a lot of the modern woods are, are different, and people are painting on all kinds of new, new surfaces. And I just don't, don't have any comments. Some of them may... may very well be, you know, stand the test of time. Other woods may not. And, and so if you're painting on a wood surface and that wood cracks or that wood expands and contracts uh, because wood absorbs uh, moisture and it expels moisture, so you have all that contraction and a possibility that all that's going to create crack lines in your paint. And I've seen it myself. I've had, I had paintings in the past that I just, you know, um, where I was just painting on, on some surfaces just to try out different things and I painted on some plywood and those paintings all now have cracks in it. But that, now that wasn't official, you know, tested. I don't want to say that all the panels are like that because there's certainly probably some very good ones out there that, that but it's just an unknown. So canvas is kind of tried and true. And, um, you know, you can take a, an old ancient painting and that's been painted on canvas and they can, re they can actually remove the canvas from the oil paint and the, or, or reinforce that with new canvas and there's a lot of really uh, creative ways that conservationists can deal with repairing old uh, canvases. So uh, my own personal um, taste, you know, in, in, in what I like personally is really just old school linen canvas. And I like acrylic prime because acrylic is, is going to stand the long test of time. Acrylic is, is much more, uh, is far less likely to crack over the long term. So I do like an acrylic primer, but, you know, there's nothing wrong with oil-based primers either. Um, so I take an acrylic primed linen canvas and then I put my canvas stain on top of it, which is a very lean uh, paint film, which is, means it's, it's good for going under, you know, um, a regular oil paint. The, the oil to pigment ratio should, should be low for the oil. So um, you don't need to worry too much about that as long as you're using a, uh, you know, tried and true uh, canvas stain like the Geneva stain, for instance. So let me tell you about Jackie's work. Um, she is living in New Zealand and has some beautiful paintings. And, you know, I just love this first one. And, you know, it's the composition and the colors that make it so beautiful. You know, I don't even know. It's one of those things that I can't even tell you why I like it so much. But I just love the, you know, the, the gold with the green and the subdued color. And, you know, there's, you know, yellow is the uh, opposite of purple. And maybe it's just that very hint of purple in the background that makes the gold color, um, you know, look so beautiful in, in the liquid there. Um, and, you know, the olive, if it was, if those olives were a stronger green or a brighter green, I don't think it would work. So it's a combination of the beautiful composition and just the colors and uh, not to the, just the subdued colors, but the combination of her colors that I think uh, works so well. And this next little painting of this fantail uh, bird is, you know, it's really hard to, to paint feathers and not to overdo it. And the, she has really got the subtlety down. You know, if you look at the feathers, especially on the, well, everywhere, but on the bottom half of the bird, the, you can barely distinguish those feathers in the, in, the, uh, in the pattern there. And it's what I see in uh, people that paint birds or animals in general is that they over uh, delineate the, you know, the lines of the feathers and they make them a little bit more visible than they really are. Um, but she's done a really fantastic job of, of not doing that and making it look completely natural and especially in contrast to the stick that the little bird's standing on. 
And this last one um, of these roses, these white roses, um, you know, roses are very difficult to, to, to paint. And again, she knows how to do the subtle. You know, if you look at the difference in the petals in the top left, you know, the tendency when you paint roses is to make those petals stand out a lot more than they really do. And so I just love it. And I love the color too, especially um, just the subtlety of it all. And I always talk about subtle colors, but everybody, um, you know, amps up their colors. Not everybody, but most people do. So when I see the subtlety, I just love it. It's what makes those delicate yellows in the center of the rose so beautiful. If, it, if everything had bright yellow all around it, that wouldn't work. Well, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next one.